Hey, what's going on everybody? It's been a while, but so good to not see your faces, but thank you so much for tuning in and watching. Brandon Charleston here, coming at you with another quick tutorial. I'm pretty amped about this one because uh, Grok has been a lot of fun. I've been testing it here and there with N8N, writing copy, uh, also playing with Clay. Uh, ever since their beta uh, API has been rolling out. And so even messing with uh, X, you know, and their new iOS app, for those of you who don't know, X has recently, or XAI rather, has recently dropped their Grok independent app. It's completely free to use, uh, but this one is, this one's a biggie. Um, so yeah, I'm particularly pumped to uh, talk about it here and how we can use it uh, with AI and automation, especially with developing your own custom workflows. And so recently I've been uh, doing some work um, for a client of mine, a very near dear friend, a uh, group of friends rather. And so building out some AI and automation workflows uh, for them when it comes to agents and everything like that. So uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go over a very simple workflow in N8N uh, where you can actually use Grok as an agent, uh, be able to attach anything that you, you want as far as function calling and tools like web scrapers and such like that. Um, when it comes to actually using uh, X as a platform, it's not yet available on their API, although I hope they add that uh, as far as connectors and things like that. Uh, but when you actually connect it, and we'll go over here in a second, uh, you can actually uh, expand well beyond that. And so, uh, so yeah, we're going to go ahead and just dive in here. So we are in one of my favorite automation platforms, aside from Clay, called N8N. I'm in it uh, pretty much uh, regularly, and so developing uh, all sorts of custom integrations and workflows for any software that isn't integrated together. And so uh, basically all you need to do, uh, well, first and foremost, go to the Grok website, right, um, or the XAI. So it's literally x.ai slash API, and I encourage you guys to uh, get familiar with it. So uh, Grok is obviously designed uh, by Elon himself, well, his team, I should say, uh, but they're along the lines of, you know, Starlink, uh, Tesla, um, all the things, SpaceX. And so Grok has definitely been uh, shaking up the industry uh, when it comes to AI, being very competitive with uh, Anthropic and OpenAI and things like that. Um, and uh, knock on wood, rumor has it, uh, aside from all the rest of the AI models that are coming out, uh, like GPT-03, um, coming out here probably at the end of January is, is what I'm seeing, uh, but we'll never know, right? They just drop it like it's cool, especially in today's age. Uh, but Grok 3 apparently is in the final stages of training. Uh, we'll see, you know, if that actually happens. Uh, but Grok 2 is out right now. Um, it can do all sorts of things like uh, image generation and, you know, pretty realistic stuff. And so now with their API, you can plug into it uh, however you want, uh, being able to you know, create copy a number of use cases uh, from there. And so definitely encourage you to uh, read about it, um, get familiar with their pricing, you know, uh, when it comes to that. Now it's actually extremely competitive when it comes to uh, like Claw 3.5 Sonnet, for example. So uh, anytime you look at an AI model, especially from an API perspective, they usually uh, do price per million tokens. And so they have input and output. And so you can see here, Claude is at three per million tokens and then $15 for every uh, million tokens for output, right? And so when you look at, uh, where was it? Uh, for pricing, there it is, usage uh, pricing. And so uh, models and pricing here. You can see they're along the lines of the same. You know, I'll usually uh, toy around with Grok Beta just to get really super experimental, but Grok 2 Latest is pretty good too. So you can see it's pretty, pretty darn good. Um, and this is kind of your mid-grade model, and so it's definitely, uh, you know, really good, usable as far as copy and things like that. Uh, you know, even code. I would uh, apparently Grok uh, can do a whole lot. Uh, there's a number of different experiments, but I'll tell you what, it's definitely got some personality. So, um, with that said, uh, oh, even an overview. It can even says it right here, uh, right here. Inspired by a Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy and Jarvis from Iron Man, Grok is designed to answer almost any question with a touch of wit and humor. So that in itself, if you need any help with your copy, here's your solution, right? So um, anyway, go ahead and get yourself uh, registered. You know, I'm toying around with the API as well, uh, but you're going to want to create yourself an API key and then get yourself, um, you know, acquainted with the, uh, the console and things like that. 
and then go ahead and hop over into N8N uh, or any sort of other automation workflow that you do. It's going to be very similar when it comes to um, how you integrate. And so what they have currently is um, their software development kit or SDK. Uh, they use OpenAI's SDK along with Anthropic. In this particular use case, we're just going to plug in with uh, OpenAI's little integration here. And so anytime you're starting with any workflow, you're always going to have a, a, a trigger and then an action to follow up with that, right? And so uh, from here, all you got to do is just hit plus and we're going to go agent, right? And so I already went ahead and brought up a simple agent uh, node here. And so obviously there's going to be different types of sub nodes, uh, which we can get into, but they're pretty simple. Um, essentially, we have the chat trigger which means anytime I input something and then it's going to process here, which I'll demonstrate, it'll uh, respond back. And then when you do any sort of chat bot, um, you can have a, a chat buffer history. So that way you can reference uh, your conversation. It's important to know the difference when having a buffer memory and not having a memory, because for example, if you just did a straight workflow with no memory, um, or if you're using something like clay, you literally have one shot to have a really, really solid prompt, and then the output is all you get. There's going to be no refinement uh, or continuous like conversations with that same uh, API uh, API call. It's going to be essentially a new prompt every time. And so, uh, prompt engineering when you have no memory or buffer memory, I should say, uh, with that, it's really um, important to have very strong and sound prompt engineering, right? So uh, from here, all you got to do is just Simply add uh, the open AI, you know, if I if, if we hit uh, the trash can here and you hit plus, you're just going to attach the open AI chat model, which I already did right here. And so really all you got to do is, well, you're going to create a credential, right? And then uh, API key, sorry, can't have it, uh, create your own. Uh, but the thing that you're going to want to do is to change the base URL. So it's already going to have open AIs on there. Um, anytime you look at any sort of, and this this could even be with any other uh, large language model, like open source, you know, like DeepSeek, Llama 3, you know, anything like that. If they use OpenAI's SDK, you can usually use a base URL from here. And this took a little bit of tweaking and things like that. Uh, but for example, right here, you can see their API docs says the base for all routes is right here. But you actually wanted to put the V1 in there for you know, for what I found to have a successful API call. And so you can see it tested successfully. And then uh, you just gotta do the workaround. This, I just ignore this, but it's really important when you are selecting your model that you just type it in right here. Um, and you could see basically on their models. So you have a Git model and let's see here, check completions. You have the different models that they go off of here, right? So you have the names. You have Grok2 Vision, Grok2, 1, 2. Um, so obviously we punched that in, but I could even change it to like Grok Beta, for example. And then, you know, short, hopefully short, uh, shortly after this release or coming around the corner here in January, uh, we'll see Grok3. So all you got to do is once that's released, just change it over to Grok3 and you'll be good. Um, so... Uh, so yeah, what you got to do, I will just uh, go ahead and toy with it just so I can show you that I'm not bullshitting you. Um, let's see here. Hello, what is your name and who made you? And so you can see right here. Hello, I'm Grok. Nice to meet you. Artificial. Okay. All right. Um, who, let's see, designed you. All right, um, so yeah, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy of Gyrus and Iron Man. So clearly we're talking to Grok, you know. Um, one thing we could do is I'm not even going to give it any sort of context or anything like that. I'm just going to say write me, uh, write a cold email for me to Elon Musk. Sell yourself uh, in working together. Make sure it uh, really stands out and is not too long and we'll just see what it comes up with and you can see right here as it works you know it's it's uh, going through everything here and so let's see what this looks like dear Elon imagine harassing the full spectrum of humanity's creative and analytical power to tackle universe etc etc I just I specialize in disruptive innovation you know I'm not gonna read this whole thing here uh, but uh, basically 
we could, you know, clearly we're uh, talking to uh, Grok here, right? Uh, why did the AI go to school? Because it wanted to learn how to play hooky, hooky, but instead ended up teaching the class. That's hilarious. Uh, dad joke. Um, so you can see right here, it's a very simple agent, right? Now, this is kind of where the flexibility comes in and how you can actually put it to real use. Um, so you obviously change uh, the input. So anytime, or the trigger I should say. And what you'll want to uh, mess around with is there's different, so we'll even do that. And then we have trigger manually on app event, on a schedule, on a webhook call, which is very common. Uh, webhook calls are uh, a thing where you send data, right? And I'll demonstrate here something uh, fun uh, that's inspired by um, Max. Anyway, so um, anyway, you can just get super flexible when it comes to you know being able to use the AI model, right? And then from here, you can see different tools. So I can actually design this Grok agent uh, to interact and do function calls, such as you know use a Gmail tool, use a calculator. Um, I could have it reference uh, Google Drive. Um, you can also do web scraping. So if you have a favorite web scraper, you can attach it to a serper, which is essentially a Google search. Uh, so I can actually, although it's not quite the extent of searching X for content, what I could do is uh, call a tool where we do say a SERP, like a SERP API, and then the actual, let's see here, the actual query, uh, one second here, oh yeah, so the actual query, what we'll do is, um, I'll have to look at this in the later, I usually use SERPer, but um, you'll just do a request, right? And then in a Boolean or search operator string, you'll just do in URL, right? Uh, or not, excuse me, in URL, it'll be in site. So in site colon. So, uh, you know, obviously if you need more context on that, go ahead and drop a comment in there and uh, we can get it hashed out. But uh, basically, you'll want to have it in your input and then give good prompt engineering to your AI agent to, uh, to say what you are and what your objective is and really hone it down to know uh, you know what we're what the what you want the AI agent to do. This is literally like a fake employee, right? <laughs> so um, Yeah, tools get super super crazy, but think of like an agent I always talk about this is an agent. This is essentially the brain So my grok large language model here is the brain uh, This is the memory and then I am interacting with it and then the tool is me like giving it a manual or a uh, giving it a, a, a wrench, like a, to a mechanic, uh, something to actually do something. So if I'm telling you to go search the internet, you're going to use the computer as a tool, right? You're just not going to think about it. If I gave you some sort of crazy math equation, like what is 99,000 times 846 whatever, uh, you're just not going to be like, that's it, right? You're going to probably come up with some fuzzy math just like the LLM will. But if you had this little fancy calculator and you punched in the numbers, this is no different uh, being able to come up with that, right? So, uh, so anyway, as a uh, little bit of inspiration here, uh, Max uh, had a really good workflow uh, where you can actually trigger Siri. Um, no, make sure she didn't trigger. Um, trigger uh, her, you know, um, and being able to have a conversation. Uh, again, there's no memory, so these are kind of one-offs things. Um, but this kind of goes to show that it's a webhook where I could do a post request and then I will, the same thing structure here, I am using grok here and then the output here is to respond to the webhook, thus sending it back to me. And so what I did is, we'll go ahead and enlarge my face here. Um, you can see that I have designed a ask grok agent. And so from here, you're actually not gonna see anything because it's not gonna go. But um, essentially, we do Ask Rock Agent, and then uh, I'll go ahead and drop it in the comments as for, or put it down in the, um, the description below on how you can design it. Uh, Max came up with a really good workflow on how to do this, uh, but let's just test it out. Hello, who are you and who designed you? Hello, I am Grok, an AI agent designed by XAI. Nice to meet you. 
Go ahead and write yourself a cold email, make it clear and short to Elon Musk, and keep it true Grok style. Hey Elon, it's Grok, the AI from Say. I'm here to help you rock the universe with your missions. Let's connect and make some cosmic magic happen. Rock on. See, there you have it. So that just shows the flexibility where, I mean, I could literally, and I just called it Ask Rock Agent. So I can literally call Siri and, and say Ask Rock Agent as a shortcut, the shortcut app on there. And it'll run my NA10 workflow uh, just as I showed you right there. Um, and then, yeah, I can take it, you know, however you want. Now for practicality uses, you know, that's personal use, obviously. Uh, just having fun with AI models. Um, for something like, you know, actual usable use cases. You know, uh, I've tested it uh, lightly, but uh, I'm going to be starting to put it more into play uh, for some of the clients that I'm working with that really want to experiment uh, with good creative copy. Not to say the other large language models aren't good at it, uh, but, you know, Grok is kind of the uh, purple unicorn uh, or the, uh, you know, the one that comes in the room and starts to be a clown and stuff like that. You can't help but just want to play with it, right? And so, I'm uh, pretty excited to uh, get that uh, rolling out, and so I venture to say that you guys will uh, be able to toy with it as well once it's released. Um, <laughs> so uh, that said, I just really appreciate you watching. Uh, please like and subscribe, and uh, if there's any other topics and things like that that you'd uh, like to do, uh, I'd really appreciate it if you drop in the comments and just have fun with it, right? So cheers, and until uh, next time.